Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about vision and how some of the optics that we've talked about over the past few lectures can be applied to things like our own eyes. So let's go ahead and start and what we find first of all, let's look at a sketch of our eye there. And you can see the various different parts. And it is the cornea up here and the lens that work together and act as a thin lens. And remember the thin lens approximation that we used that projects an image onto the retina back in the back of the eye. And then that information is sent via the optic nerve to the brain where it is converted into an image that we actually see. Now in the front you have the pupil and your pupil as you know allows for various opening sizes. So it allows us to see in a different range of light levels so you can open your pupil will open very wide when it's dark letting lots of light in and allowing you to see better when there is a little bit of light and it closes down very bright very much when there's bright light when there's a lot of light around it will close down to keep too much light from getting into your eye. Now some animals have the ability to change the amount of their pupil is open even more so they're better able to see in the dark by really widening their pupils to allow light in. Now we want to look at how the image forms and that's what we really want to look look at and the image is formed on the retina in the back and you can see that here that the light rays coming from the top of the tree here travel through uh, through the lens and then end up down here. So those were at the top end up down at the bottom. Those light rays from the bottom end up getting bent up and show up on the top. So the image on the retina is actually inverted. It is upside down. And when that information travels to the brain, then our brain will invert the image again giving us the sense that the object is straight up. So we will see the tree as standing up. But actually on the back of our retina, it is an inverted image. And the lens is also very good at adapting to allow us to see at a wide range of distances. You know that you can see things that are up close and you can see things that are far away. Well, if you're using something like binoculars or a telescope, you have to constantly adjust the focus to allow to bring things at different distances into view. Well, the let your eye does that automatically so it can be relaxed to view distant objects. So for nearby objects, it does what is called accommodates. And that is the term to allow you to view nearby objects. But you know that you can see things very close. As long as you don't get root to right up on top of your eye, you can see things very close, you can see things very far away. And your eye is very good at adapting to that and allowing you to see at all those different distances. Now we look at these here and we can see how these work. So let's look at how this works for the relaxed and the accommodated eye. Here the relax here is the relaxed eye for viewing distant objects. You then have light rays coming in parallel, which are then brought to a focus back on the retina. So that's when you have a very large distance. If you have a very small distance, then you have changes. Now note how the lens has changed. So it's gone from here to here. So it's stretched out here. Um, so here it's a little more here it's stretched out up and down here it is goes to the left and the right. And now you have a much closer object. So light rays are not coming in parallel. And they then bring an image down here back in the retina just as the very distant object did. So because the lens is able to adapt like that, we're able to view both distant and nearby objects with our eyes without needing constant adjustment. Now we also have defects with vision as many who wear glasses will know that you need or contacts you need some way to be able to adjust those. So you can have cases where your lens is simply too strong or your eye is too long and that can end up with myopia and myopia is also called nearsightedness and is the inability to see distant objects. 
So someone who is nearsighted can see things nearby, but cannot see distant objects clearly and will need some kind of correction to take to fix that. If your lens is too weak or your eye is too short, squashed together here, then you will have what is called hyperopia. And that is what we call farsightedness. And that means you cannot see objects that are nearby clearly. So if you have trouble with reading, you have farsightedness. You're not able to see things that are up close, but you may see things at a distance that are just that are just right. Now we can also of course correct for these so we can use lenses to correct for these. So how do we correct for myopia which is again nearsightedness. Well we would use a diverging lens which will take care of the fact that the eye is trying to converge too much. So the eye here was trying to converge and bring things to a focus right here in the middle of the eye. If you use a diverging lens to bring things out a little bit, you can then adjust it so that the focus is now back on the retina. So we've taken what was out of focus because it was trying to focus way off of the retina here, and we've been able to bring it into clear focus on the retina. We can also correct for hyperopia. And we do that similarly. In this case, we are going to use a converging lens. So in this case, the eye is not converging, it's under converging. So the eye is trying to bend things to a focus way back here, way back beyond the eye. So when they reach the retina, they are out of focus. So we can do this, we can converge to bring them in a little bit lower and then bring them to focus on the retina so that the person can see clearly. So the object then is able to be seen on the retina and you're able to correct for those. So the different types of lenses that are used are able to correct for different vision uh, impairments. And another type of vision impairment is what we call astigmatism. Astigmatism is an uneven evenness in the focus of the eye. And it can be caused by uh, things like irregularities in the cornea. So if the cornea is not nice and smooth, is irregularly shaped, then it will be much harder for things to be able to bring into focus. And this is an example of looking at an idea of astigmatism, trying to see how well you can bring all these different lines into focus at the same time. And this can also be corrected for. So it's something else we can correct for. If you have astigmatism, you can correct for that by glasses that actually have an irregularity in them, but opposite to what your eye has. So in a way, think of it as like noise canceling headphones that we're able to bring out by putting the opposite sound in in a negative way. Then this is able to get rid of the of one irregularity by using a second one, by using another irregularity in the glasses to be able to bring the object in to clear focus. So let's go ahead and finish up this with our summary. And what we looked at was what we have is a thin lens in our eye you made by the cornea and the lens. Those two together will give effect, make effectively a thin lens. We looked at myopia, nearsightedness, and hyperopia, farsightedness, as the very common defects in vision. So that is what most many of us have. Uh, if you need glasses or contacts, that's what, you, that's what you're correcting for, is either for nearsightedness or farsightedness. And you can also use that for astigmatism, which is because of irregularities in the eye. And of course, that can be corrected for as well. So you may have astigmatism as well as one of these others as well. So your glasses may be correcting for multiple things at once. So that concludes this lecture on vision. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.